Greetings all, Shard Beekson here, and today is Saturday, uh, November something, hang on, November 4th, I knew it was Saturday, that's a plus, um, I'm at, I'm tired, so, cause they changed my antidepressants, and now these ones, if I take them too late, which I've been doing lately, I get very tired during the day, I don't like it. Anyway, um, so the topic of today is buying power, poor versus rich. And um, so I'm poor. I'm not as poor as some and I'm not poorer than others, but my net value is basically zero because I have no income. Um, I live with my daughter, so that's helpful. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about, first of all, is from my point of view only, and I'm socialist, so it's really from my point of view only. Um, I vote. I do believe, you know, I understand the idea of a democracy, and I don't have an issue with democracy. I would like a socialist democracy is where I'd want to go. And whether that would work or not, we don't know. We kind of have one already a little bit, but um, if you don't plan for a social government, it doesn't work well. If you look in the past of the history of all social governments, they weren't really planned. They just kind of were third together, and one person started being in control and deciding the good of all others. And that's not really what I think about when I think about socialism. I think more of the idea that uh, a group of us are together, we're a community and we help each other and everyone has equal share of things and everyone has what is fair. And fair means from that point of view that everyone starts at the same level. So we all start out with the same, like a starter pack, if you would think, like a video game. We have a starter pack, and then where we go with that starter pack will be up to the decisions we make in our lives. I can't say if it'll work or not. It'd just be an interesting take. At least you'd be able to see if it worked. Um, so you have, it's like anything else in life. You have a spectrum. You have the 1% up here. Right over here, the 1%. And then you have the other 1%, which is so dirt poor over here that they have no net worth me and homeless people sometimes um not always true for, completely for homeless people because some of them are on pensions or they get disability or they're on so, um, some type of social service but for the most part they're over here in this one percent um there are people who aren't on any social services who live a very very hard life and poor life i've met in my lifetime people who basically live like people lived a hundred years ago the choices of that is because they want to keep the land that's been in their family since their people came across the water you know they don't want to give up that land so they they'd prefer to just kind of camp out on it and and scrudge together the monies they can to pay their um their taxes on their land which i, I remember somebody having a conversation about that is that if the land has been yours for over a hundred years why would you pay taxes on it his taxes aren't uh, like property ownership stuff. It's uh, taxes go into the big pot that spread out to all the other services that we get. Um, <clears throat> and they're changing the taxes if you haven't been watching the news or anything. So now this is all based on American because I'm American. I cannot base it on any other uh, country because I've never lived there. So I don't know how um, how the buying power is between say poor and rich in the United Kingdom or poor and rich in Ireland or poor and rich in Puerto Rico or poor and rich in um, I don't know Madagascar I don't know because their economic systems are different and their system of government is different and their system of how they make money is different all right so one of the examples that's very clear and you can go out and look at this for yourself if you want is diet now, by nature, those people on this side of the, the spectrum have way worse diets than the people on this side of the spectrum. Uh, there's a lot of theories about that. You can go and Google it. There's research about that. Um, one of the things is fast food over here. Now, fast food is created to be delicious food. It, it triggers that part of your brain that goes, mm, 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 that is so good. I want more, more, more. Feed me more. It's also, usually, if we were to take a chain like McDonald's and it's, I don't make money off it so nobody can get 
here to be mad at me, I guess. They, I guess they could see me. This is all my own thoughts. The food is really soft to eat, so people with no dentures can actually eat the food or bad teeth. So McDonald's is the number one choice of a lot of people on this side of the spectrum. But there are people that are even poorer than that that cannot afford to go to McDonald's. And I have met families like that um, and, and actually lived with a few of them. But then you have this spectrum over here, and they're going to the high-class restaurants, okay? And um, I have never been to a rest. I've only been to one restaurant my whole life. Um, I went out on a date to a restaurant you know, where I grew up in Sacramento, California. I don't remember the name of it. It was in a hotel. It was in a very high-class hotel. I do remember the gentleman friend told me to dress like we were going out for a night on the town. And I ended up being uh, dressed incorrectly for the particular places we were going. But it was okay, and it was fun, and we had a good time. Um, and he had the money. He wanted to blow it on something, and that's what we did it on. And so we went to this restaurant, and we got um, a dish. Now, now, granted, this is like well over 30 years ago. We got a dish that cost us 50 bucks a pop. And... Uh, it was okay food. I mean, it's more like the ambiance of, of being in the restaurant. I get it, but it, it being raised at a different on a different pay area, it's not something I'm like I want to spend fifty bucks every time I go out, you know, to a restaurant. It the prestige of being able to go to a restaurant like that and telling people I went to this restaurant at the time I was going when I was that you know that age twenty three. 24 and people would come in and say oh you know to my work and say oh we went to this restaurant it was really great and then you say oh you went to this other restaurant and they're like oh really wow what was that like you know well the drinks were really expensive the food was really expensive the dessert was really tiny and very expensive and the part of me that's like over on this spectrum is like i'm not getting the i'm not getting the amount of what I think I should be getting for what I'm paying for. On this spectrum, they don't care. It's not, it's not important if the, the, the dessert is only like this big and they paid $35 for it because it's the idea that it's a great dessert and they have the $35 to spend it on. One of the things in America, for most Americans, the way that they, they, they have a lifestyle that is perceived by others to be better than where they're actually at economic uh, uh, income wise is credit cards and I had friends when I was a kid or a teen young adult young adult I say kid but you know 21 22 years old that we'd all go out on night on town and they'd flip out their credit card and that's what we'd spend the night on the town on and we'd have fun but it was all on credit and then they'd make payments on it monthly and I found that most of them are still making payments monthly, and that's fine, but that's how that changes that buying power. Um, another thing is vacations. When I said, well, let me go back. So when I, Ugh. sorry, let me go back. So when I talked about diets, not only is it like fast food or basic meals you cook at home, but up here on that one percentile, and I know most of us aren't on this side, and more of us are on this side. And in the middle is your ideal middle class, of course. But the middle class kind of fluctuates back and forth across this, so it doesn't have a set place. You have people in middle class who have a house, two cars, you know, and they have they go on vacations, and they get to go out at probably medium uh, cost foods. And then you'll have people that fluctuate more on this side of the middle class and they don't have a, they rent or they don't have a house because, you know, because I don't want you to get, I don't want people to get upset because I say they rent and that indicates you're poor because that's not true. There are lots and lots of people that are up higher up in this area that rent because they don't want the um, responsibilities of owning a home. Now people over here want to own a home, but they don't have that option. Over here you have the option. So that's kind of the bigger the difference is that if if i'm over here even when i was making what i call really good money but wasn't really good money um and i'm not giving figures because i'm really bad with the figures because in the end it's the total net worth of your income not your actual income 
So credit is based on your um, gross, not, or no, it's based on your net, not your gross. Okay, so, um, and those words always confuse me. Net is what you made and gross is what they give you. When I was over here, I always wanted to own property. I still would love to own property. I don't necessarily have to own a house. I just would love to have property that I could go and lay in the middle of and say, mine, 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 mine. Um, but that's not an, an easy option. Whereas over maybe the further you go from this side of the middle class, it becomes more of an option. You have a choice to buy a home. You have a choice to rent a home. Over here, renting is all you have a choice for. So that's kind of the difference between the buying power. Another, another one is technology. Technology is a real big divider on poor and rich. And it makes the lines a little more blah, 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 blah. Because you know people way over here that are doing nothing but spending all their extra money on technology so that they look like they have what everyone over here can get. But an example of technology that kind of changes it is um, tele cell phones. So you can get a cell phone over here that pretty much carries a lot of the stuff, but you'll be making monthly payments on it. Whereas someone over here could possibly, and I'm not, I'm not going to say for sure because I don't know, I know some people that are way above middle class that are, you know, make a good, good money. And they just buy their phones out and then pay for their service in one big chunk. Um, I always, because I had friends, I had a friend who was a, um, an x-ray technician. And um, he made pretty good money. And he would just buy his phone straight out and he would pay for his um, service for the whole year. And I thought, that's a really cool idea. So I would try to do that as much as possible on my side. I would save the money, buy myself a phone, and then pay for it straight out. Why? Because it freed up your money during your monthly thing. So if I can, I like to push things out as far as I can. Vacations. Um, it's a big deal in our house to go on a vacation, but vacations are very costly. And uh, if you don't think it's costly, let's take one that most people, not all people, but most people might like to go if they had kids, is Disney World. So for you to go on a Disney World cruise, on average, it's $1,000 per person. $1,000 would pay my rent plus most of my bills a month. So that's like, that's a lot of money. But over here, not really a lot of money. I Like I said, I had a friend. I, I had a couple of friends. But one of my friends, she, um, she bought a house. And her monthly mortgage payment on her house was $1,400. I was like, $1,400. You could have rented for cheaper. <laughs> but it's going to be hers someday. But that's, you know, and it's a really nice home. So, but again, that whole idea that, you know, the the over on this section it's really about getting the thing and over here it's about getting the thing but in a different idea is that it's all right if i have to pay money over a long period of time here we don't have that kind of cash to pay over a long period of time so that's pretty much it i just it's an interesting thought because i always think about when i look at things like um i wanted to get the uh, microsoft pro for drawing on a drawing pad for my animation. I wanted to get um, Wacom, Wacom, it's W-A-C-C-O-M, and they make tablets that are actually drawing pads, and you hook them right up into your computer, and I could draw my pictures directly onto that, and then put it into the computer software, and then render it as an animation. And that would be cool to have too, but again, those are really, really pricey. I mean, you're not looking at, you're looking at oh, well over $400 for a system plus the software. And then I have friends on that spectrum on this side, but that's a drop in a hat for them, man. They call me or we ch chat on um, social media about how, you know, they bought a new car, a Tesla. I wanted a Tesla, hybrid, uh, hybr you know, a Tesla electric car and how smooth it rides. And they paid for it straight out, just cash. So, you know, that, that's, that's like mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling. I have to save money to buy a, a, an Xbox. And even then I struggle with it. Because every time I have the money, then there's something else I need, like, for my kids to get. So, priorities, though, do have an issue in how you spend your money. But it's just, 
the idea, and I've been with people, I've been shopping with people where we went shopping in um, San Francisco, which for me was a big deal when I was a kid, a teen, and go out shopping and, you know, they fly into San Francisco from Sacramento, get in on an airplane and just fly that area instead of driving, which is such a short, like, three-hour drive. They get on the airplane, they fly to San Francisco, and they do nothing but shop all day. A lot of them use credit cards. <laughs> But still, the, the concept is like, like, wow! I mean, I make everything, I buy things as cheap as I possibly can. But for them, the idea of a person seeing them wearing whatever coat or shirt or pants or hat or car or whatever they're driving and people knowing that they spent that money is a big deal to them. For me, don't care. I, all it is is the deals. If I got a good deal and it works, I'm awesomely happy. So... It, it also isn't just about being here, it's your thought patterns when you're here. And if you're raised in that family of, you know, everybody's had money your whole life, it, it's a very interesting thing if you end up down here. And I've had friends that's happened to too. And there's the severity of their depression made other people angry because they were only upset because they lost their place on this side. But it's a big deal to lose things here. The other thing is that I want people to know that I understand that whether I'm making you're making four hundred dollars here or four thousand dollars over here, which wouldn't put you over here, but let's just say you have one person making four hundred and this person making four thousand, the bills are gonna be relevant to that four hundred. And this person over here is gonna have bills that could that are gonna be equal. They're equal in the bills. What's not equal is that what we spend our money on. What is the ability to spend the money on? Not everybody in the world has a cell phone. And not everybody in the world has a computer still. And not everybody in the world has a tablet or some access to the internet. Not everybody has a TV set. A lot of people's TV sets are their tablets or their cell phone. Um, and so that's, that's where I, that's the distinction for me. Not everybody has, to, has a place to live. Not everybody can eat really, really good food. I mean, food is a big deal for me because I had to go on to a different eating style and it was more expensive to buy fresh food than it is to buy canned or frozen food and that irritates me. It should not be that way. It should be better. It should be easier to buy that and the other stuff be considered exotic, but it's not. I mean, you can buy a, a can that'll feed you for 98 cents, but you, you buy a bag of grapes you know, one pound is $1.39 or $2, depending on the grapes and the season. So, um, that that's my big beef about it. That's why I think a socialist system where everybody gets the flat, basic groceries that are needed to be healthy is a good deal. I mean, you don't have to choose to eat that way, but you have the ability to get them. It, um, it becomes problematic for me when you have to, you weigh out that you can go to McDonald's and spend three dollars and some odd cents for a meal for one person and to make a meal out of fresh stuff is going to cost you more than that so uh, unless you buy one of each thing maybe you could possibly make it but then you have to add the making and everything to it so um, that's why I like fake food all right so that's it I didn't think it was gonna go that long I'll probably edit it it's a little rambling like stuff um, I'll catch you all and then uh, I'll catch you all on the flip side I'm out of here. Have a great, great day.